Okay guys, uh, let's talk about the MAP kinase pathway. It's also called as a MAP K pathway. Uh, so let's let's talk about it. So let me take take a color first here. MAP kinase pathway is a pathway which is related to cell proliferation and cell division. It is ultimately giving the cell uh, the different proteins and all those enzymes to ultimately um, cell to divide and proliferate in a particular area. So in a MAP kinase pathway, you'll see the different enzymes and different different signaling molecules working together to finally make a cell grow and divide properly. Now, if anything wrong happen with the MAP kinase pathway, even it gets activated too much. So, you know, the functionality is the cell growth and the division and also cell proliferation, right? So, if both of these things happen very positively, I mean extra positively, in that case, it may turn into the cell as a malignant cells, I mean, without the control of cell growth. So, ultimately, MAP kinase will lead to cancer in that cases. We'll see all these things later. But actually MAP kinase pathway is uh, along with the cell proliferation and growth. And if we begin with the, with, this, with the very basic thing about any pathway, it should have first the cell signaling molecule, one signaling molecule. And obviously it should have a receptor of that signaling molecule. So in this case, the signaling molecule for a MAP kinase pathway, most of the cases, it, they are hormones, they are hormones like growth hormones especially, growth hormones. So there are different types of growth hormones like that. Uh, one of them is EGF, epidermal growth factor, right? Another one is, uh, it, there can be VDGF. This is also another kind of growth factor. So these are also called as growth hormone or growth factor, whatever we can say. EGF is epidermal growth factor. VDGF is vascular endothelium. I mean, uh, PDGF, sorry, not VDGF, platelet derived growth factor. So these are the different types of growth factors that can trigger the MAP kinase pathway. So the idea here, and there should be a receptor for it. And the receptor name, naming is very easy. You just take the name of the signaling molecule, that is, let's say, the epidermal growth factor, or EGF, and simply put the receptor as a suffix there. So EGFR is the receptor for EGF. So this is an EGF, the signaling hormone, the signaling molecule. EGFR is the receptor that is embedded in the cell membrane. Now, this EGFR or this receptor that is present here, this receptor is nothing but this is a transmembrane protein. And once EGF is on contact with this EGFR, it finally, it gets phosphorylated. It's an enzymatic receptor. It gets phosphorylated. And it is now attached with the accessory proteins out there in the cytosolic section, which are GRB2 and SOS. So these things, GRB2 and SOS, once those things are attached with this phosphorylated EGFR, they have a huge property to activate one of the most important uh, mediators of this whole pathway that is called RAS. Now, RAS is a protein uh, which can activate further, which can actually activate the MAP kinase because rest of the things we are going to see will be called as MAP kinase. But RAS is different and RAS should be active uh, for making MAP kinase activated. So, RAS usually is in inactive form when it is bound with GDP. Now, this GRB2 with SOS, they can activate RAS by substituting the GDP of RAS with GTP. So now it's substituted with GTP. Once it is substituted with GTP, the GDP is released. Now the RAS is attached with GTP and it is termed as a RAS GTP, which is the active. This is the active form of GTP. And once the RAS is active, now this RAS can activate the MAP kinases. Now it first activate what is called as MAP kinase kinase kinase. It is also known as RAF. RAF is nothing but MAP kinase kinase kinase. So this MAP kinase 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 is activated by the active RAS protein. Once it is activated, this MAP kinase 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 or RAF activates MAP kinase kinase that is also known as MEC. So MEC is also known as MAP kinase kinase. Once RAF activates MEC, that means MAP kinase 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 activates MAP kinase kinase. And all those things, as their kinase proteins, you know, they have the tendency to phosphorylate other proteins to activate it. So in each of these stages, they require the phosphate group. 
and usually the phosphate group donor is nothing but ATP. So ATP donates the phosphate group to RAP. RAP is phosphorylated active. It donates it to MEC. MEC gets phosphorylated active. Now MEC finally activates what is called as MAP kinase. So we started with MAP3 kinases, then MAP2 kinase, now finally MAP kinase. So once the MAP kinase is phosphorylated, it is in active form. This MAP kinase can bring in the actual cellular effect. That's why we call it a MAP kinase pathway instead of anything else. So once MAP kinase is activated, MAP kinase will activate another protein like MNK. This is also a kind of kinase. RSK, another type of kinase. Or MYC. And finally, it can activate CRAB, MYC A6 protein. So these proteins like CRAB, S6, MYC, these things are nothing but transcription factors. You know, transcription factors can actually start a transcription process. Now, once the transcription process is initiated due to the binding of transcription factor to the promoter sequence, it will start initiating the transcription of the gene. Once this is transcribed into mRNA, that can be brought to the cytosol and can produce proteins. Now, the proteins usually produced after this transcription factor activation are all of those proteins necessary for cell growth and division, like cyclines cyclin cdks and many more different types microtubules and all those constructive materials for cell cycle and division so once those proteins are activated the cell will get the signal to grow and divide rapidly and then proliferate so now let's imagine if the situation occurs like that that the signaling pathway remains on throughout the time because like all of the signaling pathway there's an on and off switch and in this case of MAP kinase pathway, we also have that on and off switch. Now, if this pathway remains on continuously, it can activate this whole process of cyclins and CDK proteins. And finally, it can turn a normal cell into a malignant cell because the cell will lose the control of cell division. It will grow and grow and grow and divide and divide to ultimately give us cancer. Now, that thing happens if there is any problem with this RAS protein. Because we know RAS is a very important mediator. Because if RAS is activated, all of these downstream mediators will be activated sequentially. So, normally after the activation of RAS, there is a cycle of inactivation also to stop the signaling pathway. And that thing is simply by, by hydrolysis of the GTP into GDP. So, this GTP bound with RAS gets hydrolyzed into GDP, inorganic phosphates phosphate is released and now the RAS becomes only attached with GDP becomes inactivated so that thing is also necessary now let's say in a certain cases of RAS protein mutation the GTP can bind with RAS permanently and in those cases the RAS will not revert back to the inactive form and in that case the whole signaling pathway remains on throughout the time and it can convert the cell into a cancerous one so there this MAP kinase pathway is related with cancer